We do call on you, our great God. God has been so good to me to give me such great family. I thank God for Mickey and Tanya. I thank God for Tanya, her sister. But I'm going to open up talking a little bit about our family just a moment. <clears throat> uh, it would be more Mickey and Tanya's mother. The loss of memory is a sad thing. It cuts off from days gone by. It strips away the treasured residue of past experiences. It erases our personal history and leaves us unaccountable blank pages in our mind. Because of the stroke and me being 72, there's been so many times lately that I'll begin to tell Mickey something and I'm telling you almost while I'm in sentence, I'll say, well, Mickey, I just forgot what I was about to tell you. That happened to anybody else or is that just me? Well, good. So without a doubt, some people, the failure of memory is largely unavoidable. Sister Lumpkin was one of the greatest ladies that there had ever been. But she was attacked by the horrible disease called dementia, uh, Alzheimer's. And for the last year of her life, thank you for Paul for the way you served our family. For the last year of her life, she could not speak a word. She just simply stared at you. And then that Sunday afternoon when we got that call that was a call that was a sad call, but for Mickey and Tanya and our family, it was also a rejoicing call because she had really been lost to us for the past two years because of her condition. It was a condition where that her, the doctor told us that her brain forgot because of dementia, it finally got so bad that her brain forgot to tell her lungs and her heart to beat and her lungs to breathe. And she, with Joellen there, simply laid over the table. It's a horrible thing, this dementia and the loss of memory. But that's not always the case. Sometimes we are forgetful because we neglect that which has gone before us and become inattentive to those who have preceded us. We can very easily center all of our attention only on our present time and our circumstance and place. And we can act as though the present is all that matters and the past is some shabby thing that can be safely cast off, left behind like a worn piece of worn out clothing. But today, I have come to tell you, as I join with Americans and you all across this great nation, in honoring over a million men and women that have given their lives in wartime for this country, I am thankful and I remember those great men and women that's given their lives. Memorial Day reminds us of the importance of remembering that what America is and what America offers, not just what happened. God has moved sovereignly in our mighty nation for 245 years of our history. And this great heritage of ours has cost more than any of us will ever understand. Is Terry clear in this room today? Uh, Terry, I was hoping he could be here today. Terry, are you here today? Well, Terry, roll in here real quick. Would you do that? If somebody go get him and roll him in here real, real fast. Because I want to give honor to a man. And I want our young people to remember. And I, I want all of us to be drawn back to the fact. There you go. Roll him down this middle aisle. To those of you that do not know, he was fighting in Vietnam. And he went back to help a friend. And when he did, the vet... The enemy that we were fighting shot him, and he had been paralyzed since that day in Vietnam from the waist down. Terry, on behalf of our great nation and on behalf of POA and this great church, we give you honor. <laughs> Terry, we love you. You can find in that wheelchair. We're able to stand. You're not able to stand, but because you can't stand, we can. Thank you.
God bless you. you. may be seated. Thank you. How quickly we can forget how much we owe our great nation. We forget how much we owe our great and mighty God who has given us richly all things to enjoy, the privilege of living in America, the privilege of hearing the gospel and being baptized in the name of Jesus, the only name under heaven whereby men must be saved. Today and every Lord's day should be Memorial Day to remind us of the mercy and the grace of Almighty God and the way his mercy has led us to salvation. I will probably tweet this out tomorrow. I don't do much on social media, but I am on Twitter and I tweet out on Instagram. But I am going to tweet out tomorrow this statement. A forgetful heart soon becomes a foolish heart and an ungrateful attitude soon becomes a highway to ungodly living. I never want to forget the things that God has done for me. And today I've come to remind us of the great things that God has done for me. A person or a nation that forgets God is a foolish and trouble bound as the one who forgets that red light and runs through it and the tragedy happens. Or a man that thinks he can lie down with a dog that has fleas and not gets fleas on him. You can quench the thirst of God only through the power of God. That water fountain out there can't take care of your thirst for God. For the Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. So on this Memorial Day, I am telling you, it's time that we remember the great things that God has done for us and the way that God has blessed your family. The Bible has a great deal to say about memorials. A memorial is something which serves to preserve remembrance. It is something which helps us to remember that significant thing that took place. Last night at the end of prayer meeting, I took those 20, 30 people that had gathered. We walked out, I said, follow me. We walked out that door. And we walked across that little driveway of ours. And there's a water booming fountain there. And there is a big sheet of concrete that we sit down on with a hat on top of it. And I wanted this church that we can never forget. My mother and my father who put the foundation under this church. I want to remember the great revivalist that my daddy was. I remember how my daddy walked into this place and the glory of God would fall. I don't want this church to ever forget where we came from and what God has done for us. He needs and deserves our praise. That's a memorial out there. When you walk by that member that's praying and fasting, that's working, that's knocking doors, that's running buses, that's helping people, that's being kind to people in this city, remember that when you walk by that memorial. A memorial in the Bible also is a rainbow. It is God's memorial assuring us that he will never again judge this world by flood. Jacob set up a memorial at Bethel. It was the stone of which he pillowed his head when he had dreamed of that ladder reaching up to heaven and angels were running up and down that ladder. Jewish men have memorials pinned to their garments which were tassels with cords of blue that God commanded them to wear the tassel so that they would remember the commandments of God. When God parted the Red Sea, excuse me, the river of Jordan, he told Israel, he said, when they go by, you tell each tribe to reach down and pick up a stone and you tell them to take that stone and build a memorial and you bring your children and you bring your grandchildren and you bring your great, great grandchildren, you bring them back to that stone altar and you remind them of the day that God split a Red Sea. Remind them of the day that God opened up the River of Jordan. Remind them of the day when they had no way out that I provided their way out. Remind them of the things that God has done. These were memory aids, reminders to the Jewish people that they belonged to God, that he had done great things for them, and that he had great purpose for their lives. 
today you will hold in your hand, I hope all of you have in your hand a communion cup, not an announced communion. I was in prayer yesterday and I was praying and I said, God, you said some things that's very important to us. And when you look at that Passover in the Old Testament, which the bread and the juice now represents the New Testament Passover, that great memorial of every Jewish believer of that unforgettable night when that death angel came through Egypt and if the blood had not been applied to the lintel and the two side posts of the door, the firstborn son of each family, even to Pharaoh's palace, the slave's house, the firstborn, even to the animals, all of them died. Uvalde was a horrific tragedy. But let me tell you, when that death angel passed by and that blood was not applied, there was hundreds and thousands of babies that were taken because their parents had not been obedient to applying that blood to the doorpost. I want to always obey and do what God has asked me to obey and do. Don't forget the Lord's Day. It's a great memorial of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He said, remember it and keep it holy. So when you hold this today, and when we do this at the end of our message, this is called the Lord's Supper. It is a memorial as a commandment. And today, listen to pastor closely. Today, I'm going to preach this. I'm not going to preach. I'm just going to say it and then I'm moving on. It's going to be different than I've ever served you communion. Because when we usually take communion, I remind you, it's like being baptized in Jesus' name again. It's washing our sins away again. It's putting our sins afresh and new again under the blood. Now, I re remember that and I believe that. But that's not what I am going to preach communion for today. He said today, often as you do this, we're doing it today. We're going to do it again Wednesday. He said, as often as you do this, you do show that you believe that I am soon to come. So when I was in prayer yesterday, I said, God, I want this church to show you. We're not going to do it for our sake, which it's usually for our sake. But Lord, communion today is going to be for your sake. We're going to take communion to let you know. We remember that you robed yourself in flesh and you came to this earth. We remember, oh God, that you were born, you lived, you died, you buried, you rose again, and you ascended on high. We remember that you do that for us. And when we take communion today, we're saying, Lord, soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. <laughs> Jesus said of that woman, of that alabaster box, of that precious ointment, and he poured it on his head, said, wherever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, what this woman hath done will be unto me as a memorial. Her anointing me will be as a memorial. Jesus said, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. A prophet's memorial. He said, and whosoever shall give a cup of water to drink in my name, he shall not lose his reward. Or in other words, if you give a drink of water to a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will be memorialized. He said, I will remember you. I will memorialize your life. He said of that widow who threw those two mites into the treasure that it was more than all who had cast in much. It was a memorial because she gave Oh, and this church has given, this church has supported missionaries. And God says those arms come up as a memorial unto me. It says in Acts 10 and 4 concerning Cornelius, he said, thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. God said, Cornelius, I'll never forget a prayer that you ever prayed. Cornelius, I'll never forget a day you've ever fasted. Cornelius, 
I'll never forget a dime that you ever gave. Cornelius, I'll never forget a good deed that you've ever done. Cornelius, I will remember you and your family. There's only one thing that God can't can do. He can't remember our sins. The Bible said he cast them out his back and he remembers them no more. But outside of our sins, brother, you let me tell you, he doesn't forget a thing. He knows every prayer you pray. He knows every time you walked into that prayer room. He knows every time you've given a prayer. I saw Sandra worshiping today over here with such great worship has been such a spirit of praise. And my friend Terry Halford, who works around this church, particularly at production time, helping make the production that it is. I remember their father, such a great man, such a good man, but he had never been born again. I watched my daddy preach to him. I watched Richard Hurd scaring to, to death. I watched everything in the world preach to him. He never moved. One of the greatest men you ever want to meet, but he had never walked down that aisle. But never will I forget on that day, that Sunday, when the power of God moved here so strong and Houston Halford left back there to where Terry is sitting. He came walking down this aisle and God baptized him with the Holy Ghost and we baptized him in the name of Jesus and his name got written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I won't forget those things. Those are things that I remember. He'll never forget those prayers. You keep on praying. They're stored up in heaven. Well, he hasn't answered my prayer yet. Keep on praying. My kids aren't saved yet. Keep on praying. My job's not fixed yet. Keep on praying. My finances are out of control. Keep on praying. God's got this thing. And I've come to remind you that God answers prayer. Over and over and over again, God said, remember. He said, remember Noah. Everybody say, remember Noah. He said, remember Abraham. He said, remember Rachel. He said, remember Hannah. He said, and remember the covenant that I have made with you. What I would like for us to pause in our mind and do is, I want you to pause and think about what God has already done. I don't want you to just to raise your hand. If he hadn't, don't raise your hand. That's not being truthful. And you do go to hell for lying, so don't raise your hand. But if there's anybody in this room that God has ever healed, if there's anybody in this room that God's ever answered your prayer, if there's anybody in this room that God's ever came into a situation and touched you, would you raise your hands and give praise to God? I, I don't blame you, I'd stand too. I'd give him the praise for the things that he has done. And God remembers all you who've lost a loved one this past year. Not only this year, but in those throughout the years. If I were not afraid, I would start naming some giants of this church that's passed away just in the last few years, but I won't dare do it for fear of leaving someone out. But I would call all their names if I could, but I remember them. And I thank God for the investment they made in this church. For the warriors of the faith that we have lost in the last couple of two or three years around here. They weren't just people, they were people that were involved in this church. Today I remember them and I give honor to them for the things that they did around this church and the blessings that they were to this church. Then every Memorial Day, I want to remember, I tried to get in last night. I drove down to 16th and Day Street. I was by myself last night and I went down there and the doors were all locked up. And I started to go this morning, but I didn't want to scare them to death down there thinking I was intruding to their service. But while you were having Sunday school, I wanted to go down there and just walk through the back door and start filming walk down that aisle and go to that altar where in the front those steps were my dad was there and brother O.W. Williams was preaching revival now I'll for never forget it seven years of age when I walked down that aisle it was a long aisle it was from the front row to the altar bench if I got on the second row I got a whipping when I got home it wasn't that bad 
But I remember when I threw my hands up and God filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I will never forget that moment. And I relived it yesterday afternoon, that moment. And if you could go in your mind right now to where you were, the place you were, when your mind and your heart surrendered your will to God and your tongue was surrendered to Him and you began to speak a heavenly language as the Spirit of God gave Him the utterance. How many remembers that day? Do you remember where you were? Do you remember what happened? Do you remember the things that went on. Can you remember that moment? That ought to put a shout in our heart. It's a moment to remember right now. It's a moment for you to grab back and say, God, I can remember. I'll never forget Anna. Where's Anna? Wave your hand, Anna. She's in here. That's Claire's, Claire's. Terry Clear's wife. Anna's in here somewhere. There she is over there. Stand up, Anna. She's a powerful prayer warrior. You may be seated. Get a good look at her. That's a great woman of God. Tell you how good it was. That's a memorial. When I look at Anna, that's a memorial. When her parents found out that she had received the Holy Ghost and been baptized in Jesus' name, they said, we would rather you be anything but a Pentecostal. And they dismissed her from her home. And from the teenage years of her life, she served God faithfully at this church and other places, giving God the glory. And in the end, she reconnected with her family, and God did great miracles there. My mind always goes to Claire and Violet. Claire and Violet would stand and testify. I looked at it last night, and it's 186 miles. But they'd always say, God brought us 200 miles to find this precious, glorious truth. I googled uh, Star City, Arkansas, 186 miles from Alexandria to Star City, Arkansas. But it was one of the greatest 186 miles that this church has ever seen because Claire and Violet Waters touch most in this congregation one way or the other, and they are memorial unto us. I thought of Nikki Brown last night who passed out and was gone with a sudden heart attack on her kitchen floor suddenly taken from us. I thought of Nikki Brown last night and she became a memorial unto me. And that's why I want to take it and tell it everywhere I can. I want to tell everybody about Jesus. I promise you I won't ask you to do something I won't be doing when I can. I thought he was supposed to be here next Sunday. I'm going to have a procedure on my back in Louisiana industry and all their cement trucks are going to come in and pour some cement in my back. <laughs> but if, <laughs> if God will be my helper, I'm going to stand in the balcony or something. It's Pentecost Sunday. But I'm looking forward to God doing a great thing and people being baptized with the Holy Ghost. Remember how God saved you. Remember how God brought you out. Don't forget the day that you got saved and your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you're no longer on your way to hell, but you're on your way to heaven. That ought to put rejoicing in your soul. I've been singing. I've been singing for two days. This message has been on me. Mickey's been singing with me. Mickey, we were singing some song. I forget. Mickey and I sang it together. I finally had to quit singing because she was so far off key, it didn't even harmonize with me. But that song, oh, happy day, oh, happy day, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, boom, 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 boom. he washed my sins away. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. That's my memorial. That's my happy day. I'm rejoicing in the God of my salvation. My sins have been washed away. I was buried in the name of Jesus, and my sins were washed away. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was, when Jesus was, when Jesus was, he washed my sins all away. Now that wouldn't be my daddy's song. My daddy's song would be what's on that memorial out there and what I'm preaching about. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. 
Yes, Jesus, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Yes, Jesus, I'll never forget. No, one more time. Come on, everybody. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. I'm just about done. But Memorial Day 2022, I want to thank God for all of you. You're some of the greatest people. Thank you, Mother. I'm preaching right now. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's what I just said. You've encouraged me. Some of you, not many left, but you have clothed me. You house me and my family. And when Pastor Gentry and I passed that torch that day and we stood here, and I turned to Pastor Gentry and I looked at him weeping and he was weeping. And I said, Gentry, make sure you take care of these people. You are some of the greatest people that God has ever made. We point the way and you take off. We ask you to give and you give. You are unbelievable church. We have our faults and we have our failures. But there is no church in the world like the Pentecostals of Alexandria. And I want to say you've encouraged me. I see Jocelyn back there usually on the front row. And I had a reference to you when I was talking about Nikki a while ago. That's her sister. But you've encouraged me. You, uh, you've lifted me up. Let's become an encouraging church. Don't you remember when you were down, you walked in here and somebody just said a word to you, made you feel good? What about somebody that maybe hadn't been perfect or maybe they, they made a mistake or maybe their lives hadn't been down? Have you ever thought about coming by and saying, man, I love you. I'm so glad you're a part of our church. I'm so glad you're part of the body of Christ. I'm glad and I'm thankful for this great church. I thank God for the students, to our student department, to the Stanleys and to the staff. They did such a great job honoring all of our graduates. I want to tell all of you that when I look back this morning and I look at this great church, there's so many things that I remember in my 70 years when my mother and father walked in here at six months. And now 72 years later, this coming July, we came to this city and to look at this congregation and see the greatest men and women of God that there's ever been. I give honor to you, and don't you ever think that you're ever forgotten. And if we didn't get there when you needed us, forgive us. If we missed a phone call, forgive us. If we were slow on something, forgive us. But I want to tell you what, I've given it the best and the hardest I can give it, and I will continue to give it as bishop the best and the hardest I can give it because you're the greatest people in the world, and I won't forget it. We need to remember the goodness and the greatness of God. Remember, oh love of God, how rich and pure. Remember his holiness. Remember his majesty. Remember his wisdom. Remember his mercies that are new every morning. Remember that his compassions fail not. Don't give up on yourself. God hasn't given up on you. The omniscient, omnipresent. Yeah, but everybody, let me tell you, everybody in this church may give up on you, but bishop nor pastor is going to give up on you. You are valuable to the kingdom of God. Don't quit. We 
when somebody makes a mistake, remember, don't let one mistake disqualify them for all the good things they've done. Remember what they have been to you and go by them and say, I love you, I lift you up, I'm praying for you, God got this. He said, and I've got to close. He said, oh, give thanks to the Lord who alone hath done great things. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So on this Memorial Day, the stars are saying, I remember you. The moon, the sun is saying, I remember you. And I'm going to tell you, I've got one voice that's the bride of Christ that's going to say today, I remember you, great God, and I give you glory and honor and praise for the things that you have done. I give you praise, great God. I don't have time to preach on it, but don't forget, don't forget, judgment's coming either. Don't forget, he's not just a God of mercy and grace, he's also a God of judgment. Let's live God and live holy because I plan on making the rapture. And I'm going to skip a bunch of that because we're out of time. But David said in 103, he hath dealt with us after our sins and rewarded us according to our iniquities. He hath not dealt with us according to our sins. He did not give me what I deserved. Instead, he gave me what I didn't deserve. He gave me love and mercy and compassion and that failed not. He took care of me when no one else took care of me. He loved me when no one else was loving me. If I could prevail upon you today, I would say settle that old account, get things right with God. And remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. Remember where God brought you from. Remember what God has done. Remember how God has touched you. And on this from Memorial Day, I know it's about America, but it's also about Jesus Christ. Because if it wouldn't be for Jesus Christ, there would be no America. There would be nothing if it wouldn't be for Almighty God. So today, tomorrow, when you are doing whatever you're doing, you stop your family and say, we're going to remember America. We're going to put our hand over our heart. We're going to stand for the national anthem. I don't care who does or who doesn't. I am. I love America. We're not perfect. We've made mistakes. We've got to try to fix those mistakes, and we are. But it's the greatest nation there's ever been. Let's stand to our feet. And I want you, for the next three to five minutes, I want you to remember where you were when God found you. I want you to remember what you were going through when God found you. And from the depths of your soul, I want you to praise God with everything that's within you for the things that God has done. Remember what God has done. Ladies, I want you to lift your voice. Ladies, with that praise like only a lady can do. Ladies, lift your voice of praise right now. I did, ladies, lift your voice of praise right now. Let it be heard in the sanctuary. He said in his book, Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Come on, men. Lift your voice and give praise to God. Uh Yeah. I want to stop. And I want to thank God last Sunday. We baptized 14 in the name of Jesus. Could you help give praise? We baptized three Friday night in Dan Diaz Bible study. Could we give him praise? We got people going to be baptized today. Can we give him praise? If you're in this room, and you've not repented of your sins or been filled with the Holy Ghost, now's your opportunity to come and give it all to Jesus Christ. But what I do want to do, if to the balcony you can come to the rail, but I, I know it's 1130, but I'm asking you not to run for the doors, please. 
because I felt like I preached what God gave me yesterday afternoon. My wife will tell you I studied. If I've ever studied for a message, it's going to be good when I preach it. If I've ever studied for a message that I was going to preach this morning, I studied. I mean, driving, we drove a lot this week. Going over being on Daystar, thank you for praying for us. It was simply fabulous, and I thank you for that. And then we drove down and saw my friend Kenneth Phillips and prayed with him in Austin, and then we drove back home. And uh, I've been doing a lot of studying for that message, but yesterday afternoon, this got a hold of me. And God wanted me to tell you to remember the things that he's done and pick it back up and remember how God saved you. Don't you let the devil steal your victory. Don't you let something you're going through take away that joy. Don't you let that situation take away what God has done. You remember how he brought you out the last time and he's going to bring you out this time. Shout to the Lord with a voice of praise. Now grab your family. Don't leave. Ushers, hold the door. Don't let them out. Lock them. Come to the front just a moment. Everybody come real quickly. Come on, everybody. Or move out in the aisle. Come to the middle aisle. We're going to speak a word over you. Balcony, you can walk to the rail. You don't need to come down. That's it. Get close. Get close. Come get close. It's the body of Christ. Look at this crowd today. Wow. We got so many. We could have had church in Branson this morning. We're glad to have Joe home. Glad you're here. Now, you got your communion? Anybody doesn't have communion, would you hold your hand up? We'll make sure you get it. There's one there, and there's one in the back. Make sure they get communion. You don't have to now, Mother. I'm through preaching. Just go ahead and cut up. She said, I can't hardly behave through all this. So take a lap, Mother. Go at it. Now, I'm not going to read scriptures. We're not going to do it like we've always done it. It's going to be a different communion. Because this one isn't about us. This one is about Him. So when you take this body and you take this juice and we get through doing that, we're going to rejoice around this place and we're going to say, come on and get us, Jesus. We're ready to go. Come on and get us. We're ready to go. Amen. This is his body. It does show that he soon return. You can take the body. This is juice that represents his blood. And when we take it, today we're not saying God put our sins on it. Nope. We're not saying that today. We're saying, he's coming soon. He's coming soon. You're coming to get us. You know, let me tell you something. I can't wait. Somebody said, well, I want him to wait a little longer. Not me. I want him to get all of my family saved. I don't want him to come to my, all of my family saved. But it's going to happen like that, and then he's going to come like that. Amen? Hey, my family's going to be saved. Can you speak that word? Say that word. And when I take this communion, we're going to say, come on and get us, Jesus. Thank you, Balcony. Come on and get us, Jesus. We're going to heaven together. You may take the juice in Jesus' name. <laughs> now you got your communion cup with a shout. Let's give it to God. Thank you, Jesus. Over the people. Bless them. Bless the people. 